Well, they bought the YouTube just coming at you with a, another video here. This is a uh, another book report for Silvernet, and uh, thought I'd talk about the book I'm reviewing, which is uh, The Richest Man in Babylon. Now, this is a, a book that my dad tried to get me to read more than 20 years ago. Um, and it's basically a book on uh, investing and saving for the future, that sort of thing. And, I mean, you can read the whole book, but really there's, uh, there's just really a couple chapters that have something that's worth uh, mentioning. And um, I didn't find it particularly inspiring or motivating other than, uh, you know, uh, it, it seems to be sound information on getting you out of debt, but, um, yeah, um, so I'll start by talking about the, the seven cures for a lean purse, which is, uh, you know, th this information is only, is found in the first couple chapters of the book. You don't have to read the whole thing. So if you just want to read those, uh, first few chapters that talk about these things, that would be my recommendation. And uh, the seven cures for a lean purse is uh, first one is start by uh, start immediately start start saving immediately. Um, that's the first uh, cure. And funny is that actually will make your purse a little bit leaner, but you'll be putting money into savings and whatnot. So um, at least uh, you know you're going to get started, and sooner the better is the basic uh, gist of it. Um, the second one is control thy expenditures. Um, basically, don't go out and buy a bunch of frivolous crap. Uh, I think we all do that from time to time, and uh, um, it's uh, something that uh, if you can reel in, you can put that money towards savings. And uh, um, and then uh, if you do that, you might even find that you don't really miss uh, those expenditures. Um, the next one is make thy gold multiply. Now this is where things start to get tricky. Um, making your gold multiply, uh, and by gold I would assume that he just means money in general, is getting to be kind of tricky. Um, you know, savings accounts don't pay very much. The stock market is fraught with uh, risk. There's other things uh, like... Uh, um, uh, you know, annuities and whatnot, and those have some other uh, complications uh, to, to using those as well. Um, there's no, it's not a, there's no such thing as a perfect situation. But I think, uh, I think that if you can find something that will, uh, um, get you a little bit of money on top of your money. That's about as good as you can hope for. Um, so go ahead and do that. The next one is guard thy treasure from loss. And this is also tricky because, uh, you know, risk and reward are uh, inherently tied together. Um, you know, you can't just, uh, there's, you can get stuff with relative security of, of investment, but even, even those 1% bank guaranteed FDIC insured uh, um, loans, they are not uh, perfectly safe as, as you might think they are. Uh, there's a chance that um, some other uh, things in the economy can happen that render those uh, useless. Um, hyperinflation is comes to mind, uh, an all out, uh, currency sort of uh, change would be uh, one of the things that comes to mind um, that sort of thing you know but um, that being said you can find some relatively uh, safe things and uh, as long as you keep your eye on them you're probably going to be okay uh, the next one is make thy dwelling a profitable investment this one is also tricky uh, you know, we just suffered a few years back the uh, housing crisis, and uh, that that turned a lot of people's uh, home investment upside down. And uh, 
that that was uh, devastating for a lot of people. So um, I don't I don't know how much uh, you can really bank on that, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's not a guaranteed that your house is going to be making profit. Now you know the best you can really hope for is uh, to have uh, that that and uh you're, you're basically you're, you're using rent where you build a little bit of equity um and uh if you can do that that's uh about all you can really hope hope for in my opinion um long run you know 20 30 years yeah you could probably expect to see some uh some some better than than that return on investment but uh At any rate, um, so yeah, I mean, basically, just don't throw your money away on rent if you have the option not to. And um, uh, for a lot of us, that's not really an option. So um, do what you do with that what you can. The next one is ensure a future income. Um, not just save, but save for your retirement when you won't have any any money and, and the idea here is again to uh, get that money working for you uh, so that you can uh, have your money making you money uh, when you're not making any money at all so um, that's not really seen by a lot of people these days a lot of people don't have anything so um, if you can do that, that's really what you need to do. I don't. I wouldn't expect Social Security to really make make ends meet for you these days. I wouldn't expect, uh, um, you know, a lot of people who have had pensions by like government agencies are finding that those are getting uh, gutted, or even co corporate uh, companies are are gutting their their uh, their pensions as well. It's. Uh, it's really um it's really kind of sad that these things are happening um but they are so invest in a future income because if you don't nobody else will and then the last one is increase thy ability to earn so be looking for bigger jobs better jobs more money work a second job if you have the time and can afford the the you know, to do that sort of thing. Um, maybe get like uh, some, uh, finish your degree or something that might bump you up on the pay scale at work. Maybe, uh, um, I don't know, go and uh, do something different, you know. Um, all right, so that's the last one. And then there's the five laws of gold. The first law is uh, gold cometh gladly and in increasing quantity any man who will put not less than one tenth of their earnings uh, to his future for, uh, you know, for him and his family. Yeah, save 10% at least. Um, and I would say save 10% gross, not net. So that money that you, uh, that you get save 10% before you can use things like IRAs and whatnot to uh, defer some of your uh, your taxes taxes on them the next thing is gold labor diligently and continue contently for uh, for the wise owner who finds a profitable employment again this is all about putting your money to use you know get your money to make you more money Um, number three, gold clingeth to the protection of the cautious owner who invests in the advice of wise men in his handling. This one I kind of take exception to. Um, the assumption here is that that people who are in the uh, financial industry will know what's best. And frankly, we've seen that that's not the case. Uh, these guys are swindlers. They're hucksters. They're out looking to, uh, to put themselves ahead of you. And, uh, frankly, that just is going to make you broke at there and make them rich at the same time. You got to be real careful about who you trust to do that. 
Um, gold slippeth away from the man who invested in business or purposes with which he's not familiar. Well, yeah, and that goes back to the previous uh, rule, which is that you only trust people who are in the in the business of uh, that. So if you do that, those things, yeah, you you're gonna probably do okay, but there's also a chance that you can get taken. So it behooves you to do your homework. Um, number four is, um, or excuse me, number five is gold flees the man who would force it to impossible earnings or follow to alluring advice of tricks or schemers. Basically what they're saying here is, uh, don't be looking for a get rich quick, uh, opportunity or scheme. Uh, slow and steady wins the race is what I think what they're trying to communicate. Um, better to, uh, to get that money slowly and over time than to uh, than to try to like get rich quickly so that's about it um you know I'm, we could probably talk about this all day and uh it's uh really an interesting subject on how to invest and make your money make more money so um but uh, i don't think it's as straightforward as the book maybe purports it to be so at any rate uh, be careful, be safe, trust uh, very few people, and uh, um, keep, and what I think I would say more than anything is keep your gold and your money within arm's reach and don't be afraid to pull it out of someone's invest, investment if you have a bad feeling, if things look like things are changing. Um, these guys, you know, these guys will, will, will talk up a good game but not necessarily follow through so uh, by keeping your your uh, eye on your gold don't be afraid to pull it out and tell these guys to take a flying leap if uh, if things change or uh, they're blowing smoke uh, where they shouldn't all right guys um, thanks for uh, watching this video uh, let me know what you guys think about investing and please feel free to like comment and, and subscribe thank you